the first testimony shared, she said she, the person was to go for a surgery. Is that true? She was to go for what? Hernia surgery? That's to a common man in hernia surgery. Is that true? Okay. And all of a sudden, the great surgeon, the great physician, touched the body. And surgery was cancelled. Surgery was what? He is the greatest of all surgeons. He's the one that made Adam. The first surgery to ever take place on humanity was done by God. He opened the side of Adam and there was no scar. He's the same one who touched Jesus in the grave on resurrection day, which we are celebrating today, and made his body clean. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11. If the same spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead, which is resurrection power, dwell in you. What will happen? Is it a quicken your mortal body? This body, not another body, this body shall be quickened by resurrection power. That means it can give you two new eyes. It can give you two new kidneys. It can give you a new heart. It can do a surgery on your body. And expect a miracle to touch that body right now. The great surgeon is where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have won the victory. Are you singing that to him? chapter 4 verse 12 I want to put a message translation of the passage because the King James said his word but the other one says capture now look at the message Bible. he said God means what he says what he says goes his powerful word is sharp as a soldier's word God think through everything so like the surgeon tears your body, God's word has power to open you up. And God's word declares himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. By his stripes we were healed. So that word can open up and do a surgery in your body. Everyone sick, Jesus Christ went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. He same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is like a surgeon's knife. It has power to open you up and remove cancer. It has power to open you up and remove fibroid. It has power to open you up and remove ovarian seeds. Whatever is not planted by God, as I'm speaking right now, the great surgeon in the name of Jesus removes it from your body. 
Somebody with love, that love lifts your body in the name of Jesus. Somebody right now with that atopic pregnancy, you be healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody with growth in your system, I command that growth to vanish in the name of Jesus. Everyone with hernia be healed in the name of Jesus. Whatever would have made you to go through surgery, now I command you made perfectly whole. In the name of Jesus. 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 Not one person will remain with any sickness. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. The surgeon's what? God said his word is like this, it opens. <laughs> his word penetrates where the medical system can reach. So great. Somebody's, I hear God as a man, he has a strength. Someone with tumor in the brain, you hear the testimony. Somebody with tumor in the brain is healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody with tumor in the brain, I hear God clearly, is healed in the name of Jesus. I hear God as a man, he has a strength. That heart condition is healed in Jesus' name. That thing that makes you feel dizzy, you are healed in the name of Jesus. For some days now, you don't brush one part of your jaw. You only brush one side because of the gum. You are healed in Jesus' name. Now the physical sign, press that part you have not brushed for some time. You are supposed to see a dentist, press it. You'll be shocked what has happened. Press it. The holes are filled, the pain gone. Press it. You can't do that. That part you have not touched it. Now do like this, you'll be shocked what God has done. You are healed in Jesus' name. See, I know as I know my name, miracles are happening everywhere. Somebody's love has gone, physical love has gone in the name of Jesus. There's somebody with injection abscess that is healed. Rush to the front. The grace sucking has touched you. Just check yourself. You'll be surprised. Lump is gone. Miracles have happened everywhere. Rush to the front and give the glory to God. A testimony not shared is a testimony lost. Somebody with severe low back pain, you are healed in Jesus' name. Oh, give you praise, mighty God. There's somebody, you can't move your hand like this. You can't. For some time now, your hand you can't move it. If you move it, you have a limit you can stop. Now, for the first time, move your hand, you'll be shocked. You can move it to any level. Bend it again. Move it again. Bend it again. Move it again. You are healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There's a lady, you can't bend to touch your toe for some time now. Touch your toe, no pain. Touch your toe, no pain. God is so good. When God speaks to one, He speaks to all. And I know, and I know what, what joy the spirit was Something happened. Something happened. Something happened. And now. Listen, I didn't plan today to go into healing, but when God wants to touch, it does. They brought a small girl to me. That was the first time I ever heard doctors told me a girl of about two years plus in my life. I've never heard that children have diabetes. She takes insulin every day, two years plus. 
That was the first time in my life I thought diabetes is only for adults. It's a small girl. With her insulin, she go into crisis. Every day, two years plus, compassion well on my inside. That was the first time I heard that children too have diabetes. Small, two years plus. The daughter of brother that she has diabetes. I thought diabetes is only adult sickness. She's on insulin every day. If they don't give insulin, she will have crisis. So when God wants to move, he has a reason why he's moving. Every sick on this Resurrection Sunday, you are pronounced healed in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Yeah, just take some testimonies of God has done. Yes. Pastor. Have. Yes. She came in here with dizzy spells. She can't stand without her head spinning. Spinning. As if she Lady, wants come to closer. Fall. Oh, glory. For over a week, it's been on. But right in this service, said God, as the God was you. on, God has healed Oh, her. sweetheart, he loves you. In the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, yes. Papa, you gave a word of knowledge about someone that cannot brush. He has pain while brushing. But right in this service, no the pain, pain that part of your gum, gone. no pain, give Jesus a hand. Are you clapping for yourself? Are you clapping for Jesus? Amen. Hey. Somebody's deaf ears open. Somebody's deaf ears open. Somebody's deaf ears open. Yes. He said for three years, he's had very severe pain in the left lower part of his abdomen. And he said he couldn't bend over. He couldn't for three, for years. three years. Do something you could not do without pain. This part of your... Now nah, press it. No pain. No pain. It's gone. Three years. Give Jesus a big hand. Amen. Yes. Lady. Pastor. Pastor. She had a genital discharge. She described it as dripping. It was just dripping continuously. She came to service with it. But after he started ministering, she decided to go check herself in the convenience. She discovered that it had completely dried Try up. Dried up. Give Jesus a hand. Are you clapping for yourself or are you clapping for Jesus? Yes. Pastor, you gave a word of knowledge that lumps are being vanished in this place. She said several weeks ago, she noticed that she had a lump on her left breast. I've examined her. There's no lump. No lump. Press it, lady. No lump. Give Jesus a hand. The great surgeon is where you are. The great surgeon. Give him a hand. He will pull her. Glory to God. Just give me a hand. 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 Yes. Pastor. Pastor. Yes. He also had he also had a lump in the, the right breast. The young boy? Yes, Pastor. He said he can't remember for how long, but it had been there for a while. But after you gave the word of knowledge, Man, so he long. felt that he discovered That's that the lump had only women who have breasts that have lump. Hey. The lump is gone, young boy. Yes. Sir. Give Jesus a hand. Yes. This young This young lady said for the past 3 months She's had like visible rashes on her neck and she doesn't know where it started, how it started. She came into the service of the rashes. It completely disappeared. It's gone. Completely Give gone. Jesus a shout of praise. <laughs> yes. It's a creative miracle here. He said at the age of 10, he had a hole in his tooth and it has been difficult, causing him severe pain. He's now 17. But right in this service, he uses his tongue to feel it. It has miraculously filled no more pain. Give Jesus a shot. Oh, that hand is for you. I give him a shot. Give him a shot. Are you happy, God? Yes. He loves you. <laughs> the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Give him the praise. Oh Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Be glorified. Be glorified. Let's thank God for what he has done and what he will still do. Let's tell him thank you. Are you thanking him at all? Open your mouth and thank him. Just thank him and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Father. Are you thanking God at all? Tell him thank you. Bless his name forever. And Jesus, most wonderful name. You may be seated. Winning with faith.
part 8. Experience the power of his resurrection. How can one experience the power of his resurrection? Resurrection is real because we all know Jesus died and rose from the dead. In John chapter 12 and verse 24, John 12, 24, he said, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abide alone. But if that corn dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Up to 26. He said, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Nobody can resurrect until you die first. Except a corner will falls and die. If you take a grain and want to plant a grain, you find that the grain will first die in the ground, decay before it will take on life. So nothing takes on life until it dies first. And that one seed that dies will not turn to come out as a tree. That one tree will give back to seeds. That seed will give back to more trees. So to become a fruitful Christian, you have to die first. You have to do what? So there will be no resurrection until there is crucifixion. To die does not connote putting cotton wool into your nose. To die means you make God to be first and Lord over your life. Whatever God says is final. Jesus died before he rose. In John chapter 10, 17 and 18, he made a statement. He said, therefore that my father loved me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. He said, no man taketh it from me. I laid down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. He said, this commandment I have received of my father. He was not pushed to lay down his life. He said, I did it willingly. When a man gives his life willingly to the cause of the gospel, he resurrects without sweat. Now hear this. It's possible to live a celestial life on earth. There are those who live heaven on earth here. In Luke chapter 17 verse 21, he said the kingdom of God is within you. But you cannot carry the kingdom of God within you until you are dead to self. He said if any man serve me, let him leave everything and focus on me. Now hear this. God can never make you fruitful if you don't totally depend on him. Jesus depended totally on him. And God raised him. He will raise you likewise. From the Old Testament down to the New Testament, there was no one that turned away, that looked at somewhere else that God ever made a fruitful Christian. Not one. Moses. When Moses came on the scene, Moses was very powerful. He was trained by the best. By the what? He went to the Egyptian schools. He was in the house of Pharaoh. And Moses believed he was very powerful. Therefore Moses went to fight and kill an Egyptian. Yet he was not made a leader. He went on self-exile into the wilderness for 40 years. Where nobody knew him at the age of 80. Nobody recognized Moses anymore. Moses was nobody to be reckoned with. At that point, nobody... Then God showed himself mighty. When Moses has lost everything in life, no reputation, no name, if you call Moses, nobody knew him at that time. When he totally looked up to God, he was dead. Then God came on the scene and through a burning bush, gave him a rod, a stick. Moses went back and took his world by storm. A man came on the scene called Abraham. Abraham was very strong. This man was energetic, so he never had a child. Being a strong man, the wife said, well, at this age, I can have children, but you're strong. Have a baby. He went to his housemate called Haggai and had a son when God has promised him to be a father of many nations. He never died at that time. He was still alive. Then he got to a point at the age of 100, he was dead. He had no hope of having children. 
to be a father of many nations. He turned unto God. He said, we against hope, believed in hope. There shall be a father of nations. At that point, God showed up in his life. When everything was lost, medically hopeless, God showed up. He had Isaac, and the promise was fulfilled. A young man called Joseph in Genesis chapter 40. If you read the Bible, the Bible said he's told in 13, 14, and 23, the young man Joseph told the butler, he said, when you get to the palace, tell the king that I, Joseph, can interpret dreams. God says, since you trust on your expertise of interpreting dreams, you will be forgotten. The butler forgot him. The butler did what? In verse 23, the butler did not remember him. And then in chapter 41, when he had no more anybody to help him, nobody to recommend him, nobody to do this, he died. Then God showed up when he was dead and made him a prime minister by Pharaoh himself sending for him. A man called Jacob. Jacob was so powerful that he could supplant his own brother. He went to take the blessings of his brother. He felt he would be blessed like that, and he was limited in blessing. In Genesis 27, he was blessed, and in Genesis 32, all of a sudden, Joseph came on the scene. He saw that at that point, there was nothing. He was dead when he died. Then, God showed up. He wrestled with an angel and said, until you bless me. And God blessed him, and Jacob became an institution. From one man, Jacob, he became a nation. In verse 28, and then a young man also came on the scene by name, Paul. Before Peter came on the scene, Peter trusted in expertise in Luke chapter 5. He did everything, but he was not dead, so he could not catch any fish. And he met Jesus in verse 6, and Peter said, Look, I have tried everything I know in my expertise, but I know now I'm dead. Anything you tell me, I will do it. And Peter became the most successful fisherman ever recorded in history. Now hear this, until you are dead, God can raise you. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, I labored more than they all. I am an eloquent man I can read, but I know my reading has limitations. Nevertheless, it's the grace of God that will make me. Now hear me, the day you trust in your certificate, the day is trust in your expertise, that's the day you will see that you are limited. The day you come and say, I know I made a first class in Harvard, you may have hazards. God is not against you acquiring degrees, but it's against you turning your eyes away from him. Until you die, you can never rise. Get to a point where you die in your life and you no longer consider anything about your life as anything. You only consider God. You take on a new life. Until you are dead, you can't rise. Resurrection is not for people who are still thinking of themselves. Resurrection is for those who have died. A young man, a man was appointed in one of the biggest prostitutes. And he came to me and said, sir, the man appointed, I know him very well. And I know being appointed, all my challenges are over. He turned his eyes away from the most high. Yes, he believed God, but his heart was saying, this man over. Now, the same man he talked refused to pick his call. He came to me and said, sir, this man cannot pick my call. I just remembered what he said, and I went on my knees. I said, oh, God, forgive him and answer him. Listen carefully. Anytime you turn your eyes away from God, God will also turn his back to you. If you want God to show you his power, it has to be absolute dependency on God. This church is where we are today because we depend totally on God. Not one member do I look up to in this church. I've never looked up to any member, no matter how much you have. I'm privileged to pray for governors. I'm privileged to pray for all manner of people all over the world. But I've never turned my eyes away from God to them. They are not my source. God is my source and men are channels. Until you die, you will never rise. Now I want you to get to the point of this Easter day. Jesus died and rose where you are dead. Even your husband can supply your needs. Don't take your eyes off from God and look up to your husband because your husband is rich. He will tell you there is no money. You'll be shocked how your husband will tell you, I don't have money to give you. 
Or take your eyes off your husband and look up to God and watch if the man will sleep in the night. Now hear me? Until you die, you can't rise. And that dead dead means whatever God says to you, do it. You take your will and put it under his will. You subdue the flesh and allow God to rule over your life. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. When God takes over, it is over. The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. He said, my help cometh from the Lord, which has made heaven and earth. He said, they look up to him and their face were lighted and they were not ashamed. You cannot lift your eyes to the most high and remain in low places. If you want God to bring his power mighty on you, take your eyes off your strength. Take your eyes off your connections. Take your eyes off the people you know. And then take your eyes on him. And then watch if the your power will not work in your life. Or accept the corner will force the ground and die. And you cannot do that if you are not totally surrendered to God. Now let me close on this note. How can I know I'm surrendered? I will move from a child to becoming a son. I move from what? A child is born, a son is given. Children are those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Sons are disciples. I come again. Children are those who have accepted what? But sons are those who are followers. Followers are different from those who have accepted me. Accepting Jesus Christ is salvation. Discipleship is dedication. Many know the day they gave their lives, but many have not dedicated their lives. The day you dedicate your life, struggle ends. Struggle does what? Jesus dedicated his life. He said, not my will, but your will. I surrender my will to your will. You get to a point where none of these things, Paul said, none of these things moved me. I count my life as nothing. Where God comes first in anything you do. You see God in action. Don't wait for somebody to tell you to come to church before you come to church. Make your life a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. That's where the journey starts. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I'll give my life as a living sacrifice. Can you say that? All the days of my life, I will serve you. I move from being a child to becoming a daughter. If you're a son, you say a son. From today, I move from salvation to dedication. Many are not dedicated. They knew when they were saved, but they are not dedicated. When you remain a child, he said in Galatians 4, verse 1, what happens to sinners will happen to you. He said, now I say that the hair, as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. So if you remain as a child, you will never grow. You know what? You'll be full of sickness, be full of failure, you Children don't grow. You have to grow from being a child to a disciple. Disciples don't go away. Nothing moves them. He said, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? That's a disciple. That's a what? Someone says, I can't come to a church. You know, no job. He's a child. He said, what? Listen, that's a living. When you can pay any price for the gospel. Everyone may raise power distinguish you today. Yes, Lift your hand and say from today. from today. With this understanding, I present my life as a living sacrifice. Go ahead and speak to God in the name of Jesus. With this understanding, I present my life as a living sacrifice. All the days of my life, I present my life as a living sacrifice. From today, I present my life as a living sacrifice. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. One thing with presenting life as a living sacrifice is that you don't judge the people. Are you getting me now? Once a man presents life as a sacrifice, that's where God takes over. You will not struggle again to succeed. 
Now, The Prophetic with David Ibiomi. I prayed for Emmanuel challenge at five points. Five what? And God saw him through. Even when members of this church, some of them said, it can never happen. You all saw it happen. Lift your hands. On this Easter day that Jesus rose, the same God who confirms every prayer, I decree to everyone who said, God called me on this Easter day, no matter the challenge in your life, I declare you victorious. Listen, you all saw what God did on Sunday. True? You all know that that battle was God who fought it. And to him we give all the glory. But if God can do that for somebody who is not even here, to you who is hearing the sound of my voice, and believe that this Easter day, I decree every challenge of your life, be declared victorious in the name of Jesus. I speak with authority on this Easter day. The forces in hell could not hold him down. From this day, no gang up, no force in hell will stop your advancement in the name of Jesus. All the demons could not stop his rising. I decree the blessing God has ordained for you. No demon can stop it in the name of Jesus. Every gang up of hell against your destiny be met with judgment in the name of Jesus. His resurrection was the beginning of your liberty. I decree this day your liberty established in the name of Jesus. The yokes were broken. The graves were open. Anywhere you are edged by the devil, I command you free in the name of Jesus. Between now and the end of this month, I declare your liberty fully established. Everything meant for you redemption that Jesus paid the price and rose for that has eluded you in the time past. I declare not tomorrow, this same day, all be delivered to you in the name of Jesus. Now, mark me, I don't speak carelessly. God said to me, There will be, be miracle jobs of all kinds. What is it that you are looking for? Listen, I hear God, I hear God. What is it you're looking for? Set your heart. Now that thing you're looking for on this religious service, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. The world is full of unrest. Money has failed. Human intellect is not working. You need Jesus. In Him, you will find peace and rest. Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Those who are not born again, say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Right now, with my mouth. I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you Father for saving me. In Jesus name. Thank you for watching. To watch our live services visit our website at www.snhos.org If you want us to pray or counsel you, please call. You can also stay connected through any of these our social media accounts. This message is brought to you by Salvation Ministries Home of Success.